Hi, Mark here from the Tangibound Podcast Network and host of the flagship show, the Tangibound Podcast. Did you know that we over at Tangibound are always looking for amazing podcasts to promote? And did you also know that we are also proud nerds and geeks of everything from movies, music, gaming, TV shows, and comic books to wrestling, MMA, soccer, and football? Whatever you can nerd or geek out about, we've got it. And if you're interested, we can help you find it. And if you're a show looking for a place to call home, we've got you covered. Side effects may include upset stomach, dizziness, tumors, shakes, and in some rare cases, death from excessive laughter. Though to be fair, it's only sometimes. Other side effects may include diarrhea and gallstones, heart palpitations, and strong desire for cookies on the dark side. Talk to your doctor and visit TangiboundNetwork.com and see if Tangibound Network is right for you. We're not doctors, therapists, trained professionals of any kind, so if you feel you do need help, please reach out uh, and get the help you need. We have a whole list of things on our files page over on Facebook at facebook.com slash crazylifepodcast, and, uh, or just search on the internet for the suicide prevention hotline number, or um, go to nami.org, or um, whatever resource you can find. But just please reach out for help if you need it. If you feel as though you're going to harm yourself or others, definitely reach out. And try not to be alone. Uh, also, if you uh, feel that way and you realize that you're writing a note or making plans of how you would do, uh, like harm yourself or others, definitely reach out. That's a huge red flag. And uh, lastly, please do not um, re- replace the idea of therapy with listening to this show. Again, if you need help, please reach out and uh, get the help that you need or contact us. We can try to help you find the help that you need. A light sucks to the last drop. Are you going to blow your head off? Take good aim and don't forget to duck. A light sucks every Monday and all the way to Sunday. Way. I don't care how you're doing, what's up or how's it hanging, I'd like to buy this world one last drink. Life sucks all of the time, stick it up your sunshine, and then you'll see the clouds every day. And then you'll see the clouds every day. Then you'll see the clouds every day. Welcome to the Crazy Life, everyone. My name's Jen. I am your hostess for the evening. And with me, as always, we have Brian and... Oh, Henno's not here. Yep. And- Boo! <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, he has... You know, work, all thing to do. work commitments and such. So unfortunately, no Heno this this time. But hopefully, he'll be back next time or whatever. I don't know. We'll figure it out. In the meantime, though, if you are missing your dose of Heno, check him out on Facebook because he got all sorts of puppy pictures out there that are adorable. Yeah, he does. Just saying. Yep, yep. Heno Hider on Facebook. The mm-hmm. you know, so yeah, definitely go check him out if you want to see a lot of puppy pics because he's certainly been posting a lot of those. How could you not though with yeah. those puppies? Mm-hmm. I mean, they're adorable. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be tough having puppies, kittens, whatever, and not posting like not a million and a half. Spam yeah. The internet with them. Yes, right. I agree. Yeah. Then my brother came over the other day and, uh, my nephew had, um, they had, he has a couple cats. Well, what? Three cats, I think. And, uh, apparently, you know, two of them weren't fixed and, uh, now he has more cats. Um, so, <laughs> but it like, funny how that happens. they're all gray except one is an albino. <gasps> so he's, he's going to keep the albino one and then probably, you know, look to find other homes for the other ones. But, you know, and of course it's adorable. So, you know, he's got to take a bunch of pictures of it and, <laughs> I've been watching way too much NCIS because as soon as you said he's going to keep the albino one and the rest, well, you know, 
I immediately thought of drowning the kittens. Oh, no. Nothing like I that, need of course. To, I know. Yeah, I geez. need to stop watching NCIS because that is not. <laughs> yeah. No. No, It's no. wrong on so many levels. Yeah, that's right out. No, he'll find he'll find homes for him with other friends or whatever. So, but he's <laughs> that's going to put I think four four or five cats in his house cuz I think his one friend that lives with him has a cat that stays in his room mm-hmm. essentially. And then the other cats are Jake's, so I think those have run of the upstairs. I don't think he lets them in the basement, but I think they have run of the upstairs basically. So um, that's a lot of cats. It's a lot of cats. Maybe too many cats for Somebody who works a lot of hours. <laughs> but, Shush you. But the There's cats, no such thing as too many cats. But the cats have, uh, I'm sure, lots of fun together. You know. Hopefully, the other, the older cats will take, you know, take well to the, to the kitten. Well, hopefully, yeah. I mean, that's obviously the ideal situation. Yep. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. You... but again, same thing with you know. I just, it'd be tough to have those kind of you know baby animals and not be sharing them whatever oh, yeah baby animals are cute for a reason mm-hmm. it's because they're a pain in the butt yep and if they were not cute you'd yep. end up wanting to get rid of them yeah as Heno said many times with uh benny <laughs> mm-hmm. like it's a good thing you're cute because <laughs> yep <clears throat> yep babies in every shape and form they have to be cute because they are absolutely a ton of work <laughs> yep yep mm-hmm. so i've heard Exactly. So, how are you, Brian? How was your Thanksgiving? Um, my <laughs> Well, okay, we'll start with Thanksgiving. So, the day before Thanksgiving, I had um an appointment at my doctor's office uh with my social worker, and while I was there, I was like, "Oh, I knew I had an appointment with my doctor the following week, right?" So, I was like, "Hey, can you put it in the notes so when I have my appointment with him, I get my flu shot?" And they go, yeah, no problem. Then the woman goes, well, actually, she's like, the nurse is here right now. If, you know, as long as you're out of your other appointment by five, you can just get it today. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I come out, go get it, you know, blah, blah. Not thinking, you know, sometimes you have side effects from flu shots, like feeling like hot garbage for a day or two. So, yeah, so I was really run down and tired on Thanksgiving. And I'm like, yeah, so I'm not going because... Like, why did I get the shot on the day before things? Like, I just did it because I was like, well, this way it's done. It's over with, you know? Yeah, right. Sure. And, you know, that's how I am with stuff like that. It's like, I'll just, you know, I'm here. Let's just do it and get it over with, you know? So, yeah, I wasn't thinking too well on that. But it was, you know, my mom brought me home food. So I had some later and everything. And, you know, that was that was fine and everything. But, uh, yeah, other than that, it was... Uh, you know, I just laid around basically all day because I just didn't really have, it wasn't that bad. You know, my arm hurt a little bit where I got the shot, you know, and, and I was, you know, I was just, just didn't have much energy is all it was. So I was like, I'm just going to lay in bed. I know, you know, tomorrow I'll probably feel better. And sure enough, the next day I felt, I was probably about 90, 95% the next day, you know, I back to normal. So I was like, whatever. Yeah. But it's done. I, you know, at least that's taken care of. And, so how was your Thanksgiving? I'll go into the rest of it in a minute. I figure we'll just hit Thanksgiving first and then. Cool. That works for me. Um, so this, for longtime listeners, you know how I get about having people over in my house. Hates it. Yep. Completely love having people in my house, but completely stress myself out. Right. Um, every year, same thing. Worrying about everything possibly, all the stupid little stuff. Yep. This year, so I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to worry about the little things. I have nine people coming over. Sit down dinner at my table. I can handle this. Right. They don't like it, they can leave. Whatever. I don't care. <laughs> Keeping it simple. Right. It actually worked. <laughs> you actually helped to it, huh? All right. Yes. I mean, it was really kind of cool. I mean, the whole Wednesday was like super crazy because um, my, my husband was getting a, a new new car 
he wanted to get a Jeep Gladiator. And so I had to work on Wednesday and I had to work actually the whole Thanksgiving weekend. I was on call. So Wednesday, about one o'clock, I ended up taking my work laptop in in the car and using my phone as a hotspot and <laughs> ended up doing work for two hours in a car as we're driving to the dealership. Um, so we get to the dealership and I took a break and we signed paperwork and did a bunch of stuff. And we all know dealerships take forever, you know, just to get everything all situated. Yeah. yeah. So then I just started using their Wi-Fi and I finished the work that I needed to get done for the day. Mm -hmm. So I was multitasking like a fiend, um, got everything set. We couldn't take the car the same day, um, which was fine. So then we drove home Wednesday night and as we're heading home, uh, the place I ordered the pies from, uh, a good friend of mine, her son actually works there. And he called me and he's like, Hey, are you picking your pies up? I'm like, yeah, I'll be there. Just give me a little time. So, um, he's like, all right, cool. So, you know, uh, which is kind of fun because then it brought back a lot of really awesome memories of, um, my friend and I have been friends for since high school. And we actually took a trip to New York with her parents and it just brought back a lot of really fun, wonderful memories of just hearing her son's voice and stuff, just, mm. you know, spark things in my head. Um, some wonderful memories of their New York trip and stuff and, and, uh, her parents and, you know, her dad and I got to spend some time together, which was really cool. Um, just wonderful people. Mm. So it was just a fun fun uh, nostalgia trip so I shared that with my husband and stuff and uh, it was kind of cool so we got there and just in time to pick up pies um we had about half an hour or so to spare mm. so we got a little close but got there got my pies you know said hi to him and you know wished the family his family well and and sent my love to all his mom and and his grandparents and folks and stuff. Right. Um, so that was fun. And then we had a bunch of people come over on Thanksgiving and everything went just perfectly, uh, which was really cool. Um, yeah, it just, it was one of those things that just went smooth. You know, I, I didn't have any major snafus. The worst thing that happened was the turkey was a little late. Mm -hmm. you know so who cares yeah you just you know entertain a little bit longer right not a big deal mm -hmm. so you know it it just was what it was sucks that my brother wasn't able to be here but my brother's in utah right now and you know happens right you know he'll be home for th for christmas which i'm really looking forward to seeing him at christmas time but yeah it was just fun um uh, we all enjoyed ourselves and it was one of those kooky, crazy Thanksgivings, the ones I really appreciate, which is kind of like the randomness people. Um, we have my parents, um, my husband's parents, my husband's aunt and uncle, a cousin, uh, my mom's new boyfriend. And it was just this, you know, really kind of fun collection of very awesome people. So good. what more could I ask for? Yeah. You know, the funny part is the way that I live my life and um, my husband agrees with me and the way he lives his life is that we have an open house and an open table. So anyone who needs a place to go for Thanksgiving or any holiday or honestly any night, um, we're always open and a, a safe place for everyone. And we invited the car dealership guy that was working on their salesman that was working on us to get this truck taken care of and stuff. He's like, well, I don't have anything going on on Thanksgiving, you know, during the day or anything. And, you know, we both immediately jumped in and said, like, oh, come on over. <laughs> like, bring the car, come in and have Thanksgiving dinner with us. And we don't care. Everyone's welcome. Mm. And he's like, really? He's like, that's very sweet. And like, that's what we do. Yeah. 
ill. And like I told my mom, my mom had a friend of hers from grade school that she hangs out with now off and on. And he didn't really have a place to go. And she's like, my daughter has seriously an open table. I mean, yeah. come on over. You can come with us, whatever. Mm. She would love to have you. And um, he ended up not being able to come, which is fine too. And, you know, I don't hold any issues, but, but it just kind of reinforced to me, you know, the importance of Thanksgiving and how I don't, I'm glad I didn't stress this year. I'm glad I'm finally feel like I'm making that breakthrough and kind of moving past that mm -hmm. and just kind of embracing the fact that like embracing the imperfections embracing the uniqueness you know some people call it the oddities of life whatever you want to call it but just embracing that and just enjoying the fact that it's unique it's different every year it's yeah a wonderful time to just kind of be with people and just love it right and and you know you know, just a lot of that stress that you're putting on yourself is just, it. it's not stress that other people are worrying about or putting on you. It's just, you're putting it on yourself and, you know, and it makes sense because a lot of people that, you know, host do that mm -hmm. because you want everything to be right and perfect and all this other stuff. But it's also like, you know, almost, you know, something generally you'll go a little sideways somewhere like you said you know everything wasn't a hundred percent perfect the turkey was a little late and it's like oh no you know it's like you didn't you know but you didn't take the turkey and just throw it out the front window or something like that you know you right. were just like hey we'll roll with it and sorry it'll be a few more minutes and nobody really mm -hmm. cares everybody's okay fine and they'll just you know whatever that we've had that happen like our christmas eve get together where you know uh we we're having like ham the one there and uh, whoever was supposed to bring the ham was running behind because something had happened. They had a little car trouble or something like that. And it's like, we, you know, you just roll with it. Cause what are you going to do? You know, you can't just materialize another ham, you know, out of nothing, you know, this isn't <laughs> exactly. Star Trek. You can't go over to the replicator and just, you know, order another one. So it's, you know, you just deal with it and move on and, and don't let it ruin the whole night because one thing wasn't, you know, uh, picture perfect mm -hmm. or something because who cares really in the long run you know yeah. no one's going to remember that exactly yeah. and quite frankly the turkey my husband smoked the turkey yeah it was so incredible yeah that's worth waiting for it's anyway worth waiting yep. for yep. i mean it really was my nephew 100 percent. my nephew uh smoked one this year too and he sent over there was no white meat left apparently everyone just you know destroyed that but uh he sent over some uh some uh, thigh and, and leg and it was so good you know so i Smoke after that way to go, folks. yeah that's why after that i'm like we you, you should just make the turkey from now on <laughs> <laughs> like that was so good and it was juicy and even reheated it was really good and still juicy you know normally like if i'm having reheated turkey i'm gonna need about a cup of gravy to dump over the top of it you know and i absolutely didn't so yeah well, I mean, it sounds like he's got a good knack going on, but if uh, if he wants any tips, let me know, because yeah. uh, basically my husband, what he does is a beer can turkey. Oh, yeah. In the smoker. Sure. So with a high bar, uh, the high boy beers. Yeah, the tall boy. Yep. Yeah, the tall boy. Thank you. Yeah. So he does a tall, bo tall boy in the um, stand, the chicken stand that's yeah. adjusted, and then he puts the turkey on it and then sticks it in the smoker. It's yeah i i don't doubt it yeah that's why i said that it's it's a good way to go for sure and you know your odds of absolutely setting your neighborhood on fire aren't aren't great with the smoker versus trying to deep fry one you know <laughs> very true very true be very fo careful folks Oof. out there uh with the deep fryers that's for sure those things yeah, that's 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 one of those like if even if you see a neighbor thinking about doing it, you're like, oh boy, we got to pay attention to this scenario because if something goes sideways, that could affect <laughs> other people. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. I mean, there's just way too many opportunities for that to go sideways. Yeah, that's just something I think people should avoid altogether. I, I it tastes fine, but it's like oh, it's yeah. just it's good. 
I just don't think it's worth the danger. <laughs> yeah, there's for sure. Not unless you can do it in like a giant empty lot or something. So if it does explode, <laughs> it won't hurt anything else, you know? <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's for sure. Giant parking lot. <laughs> so what else is going on? Well, uh, this past Monday, I um, I was on a chair in my room reaching for something. And uh, when I grabbed what it was, I thought it was kind of empty. It was a box I was trying to get. And it had weight in it. So when I lifted it up, it shifted my weight. And I decided to... Uh, you know, throw myself from the chair straight to the floor, basically, uh, backwards, which is <gasps> oh, no. all sorts of fun because, you know, I can't uh, brace myself at all. There's just thud, you know, like you just can't stop. And um, I, I, um, I got a, a scratch about like probably 10 inches on my back. And uh, uh, I think from talking to my doctor, it he thinks that I probably bruised the ligaments and stuff around the tailbone because I think when I fell backwards I think I went straight into I have a stand in my room where my printer is and I think I hit the corner basically right in my lower lower back like right about where the tailbone is and then I came down on the floor hard after that so uh he you know he checked and he's like well the, he's like there's no bruising it doesn't hurt to the touch, really, but certain ways I bend or sit hurt, even now. And it's mm -hmm. been, like I said, this past Monday and today's Sunday, so it's been almost a week now. Um, it's getting better, though. But he told me, you know, just take some ibuprofen to try to reduce the inflammation and everything. And, you know, uh, he's like, I don't think you broke anything because he's like, usually if it's broken, it hurts to the touch and there's usually bruising. So... You know, he's like, but I think, and I didn't even know that, like, it makes sense, but I didn't know there were like ligaments and tendons around the mm -hmm. tailbone. I just didn't realize that. I mean, it makes sense because something's got to hold things in place basically. But, um, so yeah, that was not fun. Uh, I was fortunate because I had a glass frame, like a picture frame to my right. Luckily when I fell, I went more left. Or when I hit that stand, it shifted the stand to the left, I should say. I'm sorry. I still went right. But it um, – and as a result, I think hitting that moved the frame out of the way to where I broke it. I think what happened was I think with my arm I broke it, but it was facing in, so there was a backer on it that I think kept me from getting cut up pretty bad Um, so because the glass was, you know, just destroyed. Um, so I got fortunate there, didn't hit my head. So, you know, fortunate there and everything. So overall, I, you know, it could have been a lot worse real right. simply, but it was, you know, still, <laughs> still pretty bad. You know, and I just laid there for a minute afterwards, like, okay, I get my bearings. And then I move my arm and I hear glass cracking and shattering. And I'm like, oh no, cause I could feel a scratch on my back immediately. You know, and when I got up, finally cleared some stuff away from me and I got up and I, you know, put my hand on my back and pull it out and there's blood all over my hand. And I'm like, oh no. Cause I'm thinking my back went through and got cut on the glass. But when I stood up, I looked, I was like, oh, I can't even see any of the glass. So there's, you know, mm -hmm. you know, and it, um, and I'm pretty sure I didn't cut it on the glass because had I, the way the glass was broken, it, it's, it's a deep scratch, but it's not like, Ooh, I should maybe go get stitches tight deep. You know, it was sure. So, but you know, it's, it's at the stage now, it just itches a lot because it's healing. You know, I had my doctor look at it just to make sure nothing looked, you know, infected or anything like that. And he said, it looked great. So, you know, all that's fine. But, um, and I go tomorrow to talk to my therapist. So I don't know if we'll talk more about, you know, I had talked about uh, on the last episode about how I uh, talked with her and my social worker now about, um, you know, me maybe, or I, I've now had, you know, done the assessment for ADHD, but I haven't heard any more on it yet. So we'll have to see how that comes back. Cause I know, they've got to talk, you know, my mm -hmm. therapist and my psychiatrist both have, you know, thoughts on it and stuff, I'm sure. So we'll see how that goes going forward. And, um, 
but it's interesting to me because, you know, I told you how I had an aha moment when I read that article about it. I've since read things posted by other people who got recent diagnoses as having adult ADHD. And when they, one uh, woman that I follow on Instagram, she talked about it when she described it, I was like, that's exactly what I've been dealing with. Like not just the little stuff, but some of this stuff, it's like, I've been dealing with some of this stuff since I was a kid or a teenager. Cause like when I talked to my uh, social worker about it, she was like, well, some psychiatrists are hesitant because if you weren't diagnosed as a kid, they're hesitant to give you that diagnosis as an adult. And I'm like, yeah, but you got to understand I'm 43. When I was a kid, nobody talked about mental health. I never mm-hmm. heard, I didn't even hear about ADHD until I was probably, until I met my a friend of mine that, that was diagnosed with it when I was probably 19, 20. You know, I never heard of it before then. All you know, because it was just called being hyper before that. (laughs) Absolutely. Right. And a lot of kids, oh, they just have too much sugar or, you know, that's what it was blamed on. It wasn't really a thing. And like I was telling her, I said, you got to understand the way this manifests in me is the hyperactivity part that I do experience. If, if this is what it is, is my brain is hyperactive. I it, it constantly thought, 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 you know, like that's how my brain has always been. Cause as I've talked on here, the reason I can't go to sleep is my brain won't shut up, you know, but then there's that whole, like actually doing things. And that's where I run into an issue. But, um, when you're a kid and you just constantly are like, Ooh, thought, give me this, let me, uh, th- you know, let me, you're not hyperactive the way it exper- came with me because no one's ever seen me physically and thought I was hyperactive ever because i don't give that vibe off at all (laughs) i am 100 percent not that person so what happened though was when i would show my that i was super active in that was that like i was always reading i was always looking for knowledge all this well when you're a kid and you're in school that's a positive Mm -hmm. that is seen as well that kid's just he's smart he wants to learn more he this and my grades showed it they my grades reflected it I don't know. I had various meetings with teachers and counselors about like, essentially like, is the work challenging enough? Whatever. I got recommended for the, whatever it was called leap or whatever it was when I was a kid that, you know, and I didn't want to go into it because I didn't want to be treated differently. You know, that kind of stuff. I was recommended for honors classes in high school, but it's same thing. I was just like, why do I want more work when I'm not going into that field? (laughs) You know, like I'm going into art. Why do I need honors English? You know, like I'm going to go, you know, like, screw it. I'll just stick in the classes I'm in and coast, essentially. <laughs> I was smart enough to know I could just, you know, my thought was the art schools I wanted to go into, my grades were good enough to get in there, and that's all that mattered. I didn't need anything more than that, really. So, you know, looking back, maybe not the best thing I could have done. But um, anyway, but that's how that stuff showed. So my parents never would have been concerned. Because the way things showed was it's like, well, he's getting good grades and he just always wants to learn. So as parents, they were like, well, we'll encourage the learning, mm-hmm. you know, and or I was always drawing or doing something. But that that was just a well, you're just, you know, that you're just a kid. Kids have energy. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, so I explained that to her and I said, you know, I said, you got to understand that part of it, too, is that, like I said, and I said, no, also, I'm like, I You know, I come from a, you know, lower middle class family. First of all, there was no talk by school counselors, nothing. I had one teacher my whole career of, you know, my 12 years in school. I had one teacher that ever really saw through my mask. And there was an English teacher I had because we had to journal. And there was something I wrote in one of the journals. And she was like, she kept me after class and was like, are you okay? Or is this just you being creative? And of course I lied and said it was just being creative, but I was in a very, you know, depressed place at the time. She saw that. And of course, once I realized that it was like, oh, I left a crack in my armor. I sealed it up. Yeah. You know, she never saw it again. So it was like, so it doesn't surprise me. Teachers weren't trained as well for looking for mental health stuff back then, you know? So there's that. I never talked to a counselor. We never talked about mental health in class. 
you know, in health class or anything like that. It was not part of the curriculum. So there's all these ways that essentially somebody could be failed mental health wise because it just wasn't in the culture, you know, no, and I'm not blaming anyone or, you know, it's just the way things were. Right. So it's no, yeah. You know, so it's not surprising that there could be a whole group of people our age, 30 year olds, whatever, that didn't get the diagnosis that they maybe should have gotten. And also my parents wouldn't have been able to afford to take me to a therapist when I was a kid. You know, mm-hmm. that that just wouldn't have happened. You know, it, it just, there that wouldn't, there's no way, you know, we, I yeah. didn't, I didn't have health insurance as a kid, you know, like for, I didn't have health insurance until I got a job and started paying for my own, you know? Well, that's why I gave my mom like a million and, well, you know, I can't even tell you how much credit I give my mother because like it's the same situation. I mean, they, I, you know, me being bipolar, yeah. I was bipolar as a teen. I was bipolar as a junior high student, Yeah, you know, in probably bipolar my entire life. Yeah. Well, my mom didn't know what bipolar was. Bipolar would barely even existed at that point in our lives. Yeah. And well, even in she, fairness, like even now, most people don't know what bipolar is. No, or, exactly. And all she did was she knew her daughter was hurting. Yeah. And she wanted to solve it. Yeah. Didn't know how. Right. So she kept coming up with ideas and throwing shit at me. Yeah. Excuse my language, folks. Yeah. And throwing there was, stuff at me. And there was no internet to jump on to go Google yeah. things to like, you know, look Did for I bomb blogs or anything. Yeah, there was yeah. none of that. Yeah. None of that. All she kept all she could think of was like, All right, well let's tackle this. My daughter's hurting. How can I fix it? Mm-hmm. And, you know, and she came up with because I had a trouble sleeping and I had anxiety attacks if I stayed up too late. So she got me sleep tapes. Yeah. Meditation. Sure. Yeah. Very early forms of meditation and meditation therapy. Mm-hmm. She found some tapes on the inter on wherever. I don't know where she went and found them, but she found these like so she got them for me. She's like, "Well, try listening to these when you go to bed." Yeah. I'm like, okay, great. So you know, I, I told her I needed to do certain things. She let me do them. She's like, "All right, you need to be in bed by ten. We will start bedtime at ten. Okay, you know." And she just yeah. went with it. Didn't make me feel uncomfortable. Didn't make me feel weird about things, even though they're very weird requests and very weird things to do. But yeah. she's like, "All right, this is what we gotta do. This is what we gotta do." And, you know, and she just rolled with it. And you know, bless her for for having that mentality with me that you know she just accepted that that was my reality yeah and went with it yeah and she wasn't like oh you're just being a teenager you know like or whatever yeah Yeah. (laughs) she didn't dismiss it she didn't she's just kind of like okay this is what we're dealing with let's deal with it all right let's go you know and my stepdad didn't understand you know and she but she basically said this is just the way it's gonna be yeah you know and she's not a super strong assertive woman she just for some reason and i don't know why but I, she just I think got it and accepted to, it to some extent i think it was also kind of easier to lean into it than to fight it as far Maybe, as you right. you know what i mean like and i'm not <laughs> saying she took the easy route but you know what i mean i think it was like right? well here are my options. Like I can kind of just go with it and that seems to help Mm -hmm. rather than, you know, dismissing it or denying it or whatever. And that doesn't really help. So, you know, whatever it was, it's, it's great because it is like, and I know my parents would have done anything they could have, you know, but I Mm -hmm. didn't even realize something wasn't right. You know, me neither. I had no clue. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's why I said it was, it was almost funny to me when you got your diagnosis because when you were like, can you believe the doctor said, you know, she thinks I'm bipolar. And I immediately, all the years of high school and all this stuff where you were <laughs> so manic is what we'll yeah. call it now. But at the time it was, you were hyper or peppy or whatever you want to call it. Right. And it was like, Ugh, you know, it's too much, but it was like, it was too much, but remove the jokingness from it. Like it was too much. 
Like you yeah. were manic in, you know, in those times. It's and a problem. It was yeah. a problem, but we didn't know any better, you know, otherwise, hell, exactly. you know, at that time, if I would have known what bipolar was, I might have been like, hey, you know, you might be manic <laughs> because <laughs> the, second, have an issue. <laughs> the second you said it to me, once we knew what it was, I was like, oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it didn't even take me two minutes to answer you. <laughs> I was just like, yes, because it did. It all I flooded back. You know, and yeah, and that was exactly. it. You know, it was the truth in that. So, and that's why I said it just stinks. We didn't know, you know. Yeah. And unfortunately, right. we it suffered. But it's not anyone's fault as far as that goes. It just wasn't. It was just where we were at the time. And thank goodness it's yeah. better now. It's still not where it needs to be, but at least things are better now to where more people are willing to talk about things and look for solutions and answers and and help and such. So yeah. But anyway, so that's been my whole, really, that's been kind of mentally consuming me because yeah. I, I'm kind of in a holding pattern until I find out what they say. And I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm, I'm excited at the moment about potentially maybe finding better answers and stuff. And I had a good talk with my social worker. And like I've said before, calling her just a social worker is not giving her the fair do that she deserves because again she has a lot of letters at the end of her name so she's got all sorts of training she's a therapist sure. and other stuff too um and but it's nice when i talk with her because it isn't just talking about uh it, it's almost like an it's, it's also like a, another little therapy session mm -hmm. and it's kind of weird because i'm almost kind of got two therapists at the same time now 99 percent of the time they're kind of you know on the same path but she called me out the other day because I minimized something. And she's like, you know, I've been hesitant to do that because some people don't. I'm like, no, do it. I was like, please, because I'm like, it's one of my worst qualities. I do it so much that I think like here I've minimized my problems. And that's why I've said, like, when I went for disability, I think that was what hurt me was I didn't go in and I think I minimized I think the way I delivered it, it made it sound like it wasn't that bad. Whereas yeah. in reality, I can't, I have a very tiny window of things that I do. And mm -hmm. that's it. Whereas most people have a very large window of things that they're at least willing to do. I do not. I have a very narrow window. And if I do something, it's still got to meet A, B, and C for me to do it. Like, I don't just, it's rare that I'm just like, yeah, sure, let's go and just go do something, you know. Um, so, uh, you know, it was nice that she caught that and she goes, okay, well, now that I know that, I'll call you out. I'm like, please do. And, you know, she's like, well, I'm not going to be a jerk. Or, I'm like, no, no, I understand. I'm like, I fully understand that. I'm like, you are coming from a place of wanting to help. Yeah. If I know that and you come at me, I'm not going to go on the defensive on you. You know, because I know you're coming from a good place most of the time. So, I mean, you know, unless she was a real jerk about it. <laughs> <laughs> but sure. I've, I've worked with her long enough to, I highly doubt that it happened. So, uh, yeah, yeah right. she's more professional than that, first of all. But, uh, but it is nice talking with people about this. And then the feeling, I think the reason I felt so excited afterwards and stuff was because I think what essentially happened was I think I finally am letting myself like that. It's okay that I'm this way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'm finally letting go of that, even though it's like I'm depressed and I'm, I have anxiety, but I'm still meh, holding on to reins. And it's like, yeah, but buddy, you know, you've also got that diagnosis of agoraphobia now. So even as tightly as you've gripped those reins, you're just, you're not helping yourself, you know? And I think I'm finally at that point to where I'm like, I got to let go of more to yeah. fully, um, to fully get the help that I need here. So we'll see where it goes. So right now, just honestly optimistic about it, which is not a place that I sit in, uh, comfortably. <laughs> as you well know i do not yes, sit in optimism <laughs> well <laughs> that's a good place for you to be in yeah but like right now what's the the worst that they could say is i don't think that that's what's going on but i 
even if it's not a full diagnosis, I'm lean, I definitely lean in those categories. And that's still a concern, no matter what. So, again, well, a lot of times there's a lot of overlap, uh, as exactly. we all know. Yep. When it comes, I mean, when it comes to mental illness, they're, they're just, there is no exact right. science well, yet. And I, one, I wish and, there was. And one can cause, you know, another. And they do rely on each other and lean yep. on each other. And, you know, yeah. they like to partner up totally. for sure. Yep. I mean, there's, there's no question. I mean, I mean, I have social anxiety disorder that is also bipolar. Right. So are they one and the same? There's could be arguments again or for that. Yeah. Um, are they very different? They just help in the coexist. There's definitely arguments yeah, for that too. Exactly. You know, it but just... ultimately really all that matters is the, what I'm looking at is the diagnosis doesn't matter as much as, Hey, I know this symptom, this symptom, this symptom bother me and they're not good. So it yeah. doesn't matter if I'm declared that I have ADHD, as long as it's like, well, what we see is you definitely have this, this, and this let's work to make those things better. And that's really in the end. Yeah. That's what is important more so than the other, you know? So that's why I'm not concerned about like a hundred percent getting the diagnosis as much as I am just like making sure my team that's helping me knows what is negatively affecting me so we can all attack it together. You know? Exactly. I I mean, there's no better put words than that. Yeah. I mean, it's really ultimately comes down to is that your team understands what's standing in your way of having the life that you want Mm -hmm. and helping you in every way, medically, therapeutically, you know, whatever it takes to help you get to the life that you want for yourself. Yeah. Well, it's like, you know, two of the questions I got asked by my social worker, and this will again show, you know, the better line than she's just a social worker, which is, you know, what, she asked me, you know, if all this other stuff was like removed, what would I be doing? Like what, what, where would I be pointing myself in life? And of course, as I've told you for years, you know, this, I don't know. I 100% have no clue. I'm lost, you know? Yeah. And the other question she asked me, cause I was telling her that I just wish I could feel like I was contributing, you know, financially and such. And she goes, well, you know, I want you to think about how you have self-worth without tying money to it. Yeah. That's really hard for me. And that, again, that shows her insight into me Mm -hmm. because that is exactly the kind of questions I need to be asked because I've said on here before, the easiest way for me to hit a depression cycle is when I have no money. It always has been. It's the easiest way. Well, one of the easiest ways. There's other ways, but, you know, I'm not necessarily going to put all of my weaknesses on Front Street either. But uh, <laughs> but that is a major way for me. That is one that leads to negative thoughts probably more than anything else for me. So, you know, and that's a good question. And I've put some thought into it, and I still don't have a great answer. You know, like, I know some stuff. Like, I know, again, you know, I have bad self-esteem, but I also know that I have a lot of worth to people. You know, it's been proven time and time again, and I accept it. I see that, but I also don't apply it. (laughs) You know, I'm just like, oh, yeah, that's that's nice. Put that over there. You know, like, (laughs) Mm -hmm. I'll get to that a little later. Yep. You know, I could sing your praises all day long. And I know, and that's the thing, is I have plenty of people who constantly compliment me, all this kind of stuff. And then not, like solicited type stuff but just people yeah. pay me compliments a lot and and I like I said I see them I accept them I really do the problem is I believe everybody else values me but I can't figure out why I don't value me yeah right and that's the problem it's uh, you know it's the old it's an inside job until I find that value in myself all the other compliments are great but they don't they don't fix the problem, you know? No, so no, I understand. not that they For should sure. either, you know, I should like myself. That's mm-hmm. more important than whether or not anyone else likes me, but you know, it's an interesting thing. Again, something for me to sit in and be really uncomfortable for a while. And I like that because, you know, you've given me a brain puzzle is what it is. 
and you know I love figuring stuff out. So, you know, it's a good spot. So anyway, that's that's my whole mess of things. Right? It's weird. I, I put a tweet out the other day that basically is like I've never felt like more of a mess but also felt like I'm on the right path at the same time. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like I'm falling down a hill, just rolling uncontrollably, but I'm still going toward where I was meaning to go, you know, or meant to go, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, it's like, I don't know where the hell I'm going, but you know, I'm supposed to get there, you know, and that's basically where I am right now is I'm kind of flailing around and a little lost, but it isn't a bad thing. It's just uncomfortable, really yeah. uncomfortable, but that's okay. It's, it's an okay, uncomfortable for the moment. So how about you? Yep. How other than Thanksgiving? Well, I'm un- com- uncomfortable is uh is good, you know, and that's I'm learning to to kind of adjust to that and and uh and live with with uncomfortable. Um so let's see what else happened. So on the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, I actually had a call with my director and uh, he wanted to talk with me and we discussed a few different things coming, going on with work and whatnot. He also wanted to let me know that he recognized that um, my compensation plan was not up to the level that he would like it to be in. And given the state of the economy and given the state of the job market as it stands, um, he felt that they needed to do something to show me that they appreciated me working where I work. Wow. Trying to make sure you you don't get poached. That's what he's doing. Yep. Yep. (laughs) That's smart. (laughs) That's real smart, though, because if you got somebody you appreciate – you know, you want to take care of them before somebody else can come in, you know, showing them some green grass on the other side, you know? <laughs> well, I'm not going to lie. I have uh, let it let it out to a few people with the company that <laughs> there's other companies that are, are trying to poach me. Yeah. And uh, Listen, so they responded. I've, I've said right now, I, I you know, if, if you're anybody in any position, you got to check job boards because you got to look right now because you just don't know. You might be able to really, you know, improve your situation financially. So it's it, it's really it behooves you to look now. Of course, there's a whole we've talked in the past on, you know, there's a lot of things to weigh before you jump ship. But it's still like I don't think there's anything wrong with having a look see to make sure like he, he your boss said. Make sure you're getting paid fairly. If the market now says your job pays X dollars and you're significantly below that, maybe it's time to re- do some renegotiation, you know? Well, he ended up giving me five and a half percent more. Okay. That's, that's, yeah. that's strong. Yeah. Yeah. It was super strong. Okay. <laughs> I was super happy with that. I'm yeah. like, all right, I okay. can live with this. Yeah. And so. Should have just been um, like, that's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> well. Funny you mentioned that. Oh, like I want my own parking spot. I need <laughs> M and M's in my on my table all the time. Yeah. Well, it wasn't quite like that. Yeah, you like, like slide um, a piece of paper. You're like, this is my rider. <laughs> come come April, um, for those that are in like the the business world, usually April, beginning of April is the at the end of the first quarter, is the time where everyone posts their end of year numbers and whatnots and bonuses and profit shares and whatnot all seem to happen at the beginning of April. He went to bat for me, not only to get me an increase, um, compensation increase. He also went to bat so that that increase did not affect anything that happens in April. So whatever they decide to you know, divide out or however it works, depending upon the company, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. What happened now is not going to make any difference to what would happen then, which leaves me open to a potential 4%, uh, raise, if not more. Wow. Okay. Um, April. That's really cool. Cause, cause that would be a typical business move. To hit you with a raise now and then down the road be like, well, we just gave you a raise. I mean, we can't, you know, we can't right. just constantly be giving raises out. <laughs> so exactly. So it was really um, the 
cool part is, hey, yeah, I'm getting more money. Mm-hmm. That is cool. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. But um, the underlying point of it, for me, that hit home is the fact that I'm valued. Yep. Which is something and, it really, like, I can't help but yeah have, like, the, for lack of a better term, the, like, proud parent moment. In, yeah. <laughs> in that when you took this job and you were telling me stuff, remember going back and you said it on the episode and you were like, they're, you know, why are they doing this? And I'm like, because they see that you're an asset, you know, and it was like, you're finally getting some value. And it makes me so happy to see that you're finally getting recognition for the, the, you busted your tail at different jobs and been unappre- yeah. underappreciated for years. So I'm glad that somewhere even if it has zero to do with actually you at this point, and it's simply just the economy and they're like, Hey, we can't afford to lose somebody who cares right. at this point. It's you're still sh- getting shown the appreciation you deserve. So I could not be happier for you about that. And that is, it. it it's really like we, like you were talking about the, the uncomfortable, but okay. Yeah. It's the same type of scenario. It's like, I'm kind of I'm I'm uncomfortable because yeah. this is not a place I've ever been before. Because you've right? been you've been trained for years to undervalue yourself. Right. Mine all comes from my own head. Yours comes <laughs> from your workplaces because they've constantly. Well, you know, you're not quite. You know, and and yeah. I got that too. Some of mine does come from that from work too. But you know what I'm saying is it's like, but I I see it, and that's why I'm so happy that you're finally seeing the other side of it because. You know, much like you talked about singing my praises, I have been like, how many years have I, when you tell me stuff from work and I'm like, they yeah. should be this and they should, you know, so <laughs> it's like, I'm, I'm very much, you know, I have since the last time I worked, I have become such an advocate for people knowing their worth, holding to your value, not just in work, but in relationships, everything, just think more of yourself, you know, because as we learn, especially in work, most of these places, the second that they can cut a dollar from their payroll, they will, you know? And Mm -hmm. so you shouldn't give them any more loyalty than that, you know? So if someone else offers you better, consider it or bring it to the table and say, Hey, like you said, you know, you just let it slip a little bit. Like, Hey, you know, I mean, Maybe somebody else wants to take me to the dance this year, you know, and they're like, whoa, 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 (laughs) you know, (laughs) (laughs) and, you know, I mean, you don't want to go to that well too many times, you know, there is, but right now is a time you can, it can definitely be used as a negotiating tactic right now. So, you know, if you're a person that you know you're worth, you know, hold to Mm -hmm. it. Don't let them talk you down. And something to keep in mind that... We're taught so strongly that to be um, self-centered and narcissistic is wrong, is bad. No one likes those people. You don't want to be those people. Yeah. So we err on the side of being, have not, ha- of having too much humility, yeah. you know, and we, we, Err on the side of being super humble Mm -hmm. and super apologetic for who we are and all this stuff because we desperately do not want to be narcissistic and we desperately do not want to be overconfident or cocky. All these bad, bad, bad things. Those things that were taught over the years, like that you don't you don't go into a thing right away and go, Hey, how much does this pay? Yeah. That's garbage. You know? Um and and also, I saw a great tweet the other day that it was like, you know, it's like at a job interview. And it's like the employer is a potential employer is like, so tell me about yourself. And the person's like, nah, nah, nah. Tell me why so many people have been quitting lately. <laughs> yeah, I love it. And I was like, yes, that is the world we're in right now. Now, months down the line, it may shift back to the other way. But right now, I don't think there's anything wrong with asking strong questions because if you go to a place and they can't keep anybody, that's telling you something. Mm -hmm. You know, either they don't pay well, it's a bad environment, it's both. You know, there's something there that tells you that something is afoot. 
you know, and you want to find those things out beforehand. It's like, you know, before you go buy a house, you talk to your neighbors. Hey, is there anything squirrely going on in the neighborhood? Mm -hmm. Are the, the, you know, the rates here crazy? Do you know this landlord? Whatever it is, you want to find this stuff out and, you know, get as much information before you make a big decision. And I think we're kind of at that point with some of these jobs, too, is that some people are, like, asking these questions now. And they're finding out what does it pay up front because it's like I think it I think it's garbage that when you look on job job boards they rarely mention the wages up front unless it's an hourly job. If it's hourly, a lot of times they'll tell you it pays between this and this hourly or something. And the whole reason behind it is the negotiation, of course, right? If they can well, get you for eight bucks an hour, they don't want to pay you ten. You know, right? Well, here's a tip, folks. There is a website called Glassdoor. Glassdoor.com. If you go to Glassdoor.com, they will give you average rates for a given job description for a given area. Yeah. They do a bunch of different backgrounds and all this stuff. Will, you know. Yeah. Anyways, if you type the information in, they will give you out some numbers so that you will know what to expect for that specific job. Now, even Further, they have reviews from employees that have worked for the company. Mm -hmm. They also have reviews of the companies themselves. And sometimes we'll even have the cost or the compensation for the specific job for the specific company. So before you interview yeah. out, please check out Glassdoor.com. I am not a paid right. sponsor or anything like that. Yeah. But just letting you know. And that's good for a couple reasons. Because one, if, if you're coming out of one place, right? Like say you're in one job and it pays you, let's just for sake of argument, say it pays you 40000 a year, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe you're being underpaid for your position. You don't know because you haven't worked anywhere else, right? I know um, Tony's talked about that at one of the places he used to work, you know, that the guys there, a lot of them came right out of high school, went into that job, and they've worked there their whole life. They don't know their actual value. They only know what that company values you at. And you could be getting significantly underpaid because you've never looked at the market. So for your yeah. own sake, that's why I was saying earlier, it's like check the job boards out. Look for things like that and see because you may be getting significantly underpaid. And not just because of the current economy, but just – in general, mm -hmm. if you've only worked for one place or something, or, work, or even worked anywhere for a long time. Because a lot of companies will just pay and have a ceiling on stuff, you know. So you never know. Another company may have a higher ceiling, you know. Maybe they're a newer company. Maybe they just have different practices or whatever it is. So, you know, there's all these things you can do. And definitely check it out. Also, then when you go into the interview, you're not asking for an astronomical amount either. You don't overshoot yourself because that can hurt you as well. If you walk in and go, hey, I want 80000 a year. And they're like, whoa, we only pay like sixty. You know, like you don't, you don't want to overshoot by that much because then they might go, we're too far apart. You know, <laughs> like, so. Do your research. Yeah. So. So, no, it's. It's really, I mean, shoot, I could talk an hour alone on the job market right now. Yeah. And all the craziness and, and silliness that's happening right at the moment. Um, but it's just, it is a fascinating, unprecedented time yeah. in the in everything. You know, from the mental health stuff to the job market to the lack of employees to, I mean, it's just, it's crazy. All of the stuff, you know, the work from home, the, yeah. I mean, it's just, it boggles the mind how much has changed yeah. over the last year and a half, yeah, two really years. Does. Yeah. I mean, it just, I, it's hard to keep up. Yeah. People had a chance to really step back and look. It's something mm -hmm. we haven't had in, in an, at least like our lifetime. That's never happened to where so many people had the ability to sit at home and go, huh, you know, and just look at everything in general and really start, you know. Shall I say, did they have the moment to stop, collaborate, and listen? <laughs> I don't think you should ever, ever quote Vanilla Ice. <laughs> 
<laughs> no. No. <laughs> not a good quote. No. <laughs> Probably not. Yeah, well, you know. This is also the guy who brought us ninja rap, so I don't know how much of a genius Ooh, we're talking ouch. about here. Yeah. Mm, yeah. That hurt. Not <laughs> as much as his stealing of the Queen songs, but what that's you all right. Those are totally different songs, Jen. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. That's different. Yeah. Like, oh. All right. <laughs> For those of you who don't know what we're talking about, look up Vanilla Ice and uh, and Queen, and you'll get a bunch I of hope, stuff. yeah. I was going to say, most people, well, I guess if you're younger, maybe you don't know, but. Yeah, yeah most people should know, yeah. but you, you never know. So, so something else that really cool that happened um, was a person. Um, well, basically, let me backtrack a little bit. The week before Thanksgiving, I received an email from my old fraternity. And yes, folks, it was a fraternity. Um, I was not in a sorority. Uh, it's co-ed. It's a business. We did have some social stuff, but it is a business fraternity mm-hmm. um, that I was involved in at my local university. Um, that was 21 years ago. I graduated in 2000. So I was part of the fraternity from the end of 98 to the middle of 2000. So they contacted me and they were doing a, um, the fraternity was having a competition where they broke students out into groups and they were to put together a presentation, PowerPoint preferably, um, about a specific aspect um of business ethics um you know stuff like that honor things like that and they had to put together a six minute presentation well they were looking for judges so they reached out to alumni as well as um you know teachers and professors and stuff to to see see if they get enough judges together to help yeah i've avoided this stuff for 21 years <laughs> and the reason I, div- I avoided it is because I didn't think I had anything to offer and as horrible to say you know I don't like to think it let alone say it out loud but I really when I thought back on it I'm like am I better than I was then and I've always kind of come up with not really so I didn't want to go and show my face and say, you know, hey, here I am and not be further along or at least at the place that I wanted to be in my life when I went back, you know? Yeah. So when I saw this email, I'm like, that sounds like fun. Yeah. And I thought about it and I'm like, I have things I want to say and I have things I want to give and, and I want to offer. And to in other fairness, people. you've overshot your degree. I don't know if you've realized that, but you overshot your degree. You're working in logistics with an HR degree. Yeah. Usually you don't get into <laughs> logistics unless you're working, you have a logistics degree. <laughs> so <laughs> that's true. You overshot. <laughs> well, it was one of those things that, you know, life takes you where it's going to take you. And yeah. So, well, it's, it shows that, you know, you've always been willing to take on new challenges. You've always wanted, oh, yeah. like, this is great, but what else can I do? What else can I learn? How can I help the team more? How can I, you know, in, mm-hmm. understand my job more by learning part of this job? And, you know, you've just, you keep Jenga towering, you know. I really did. My entire career was yeah. a big Jenga. Yeah. You're yeah. 100% right. Or at least that. that's how it was perceived. You were perceiving it because at some point you're like, someone's going to pull a piece out and it's just going to crumble. But Right, exactly. But that's not <laughs> the case really is that you keep showing and proving that you can do this stuff as you're moving. You know, so that's why I said it's, you know, you really did overshoot your degree. So you really, you're a good testament to what you're doing. You know, and just kind of like, yeah. hey, just, you know, go get a degree because you can turn it into other stuff. It got well, you in the door, which started the process. You exactly. Know? And that's truly my ultimate opinion on degrees yeah. is that 
if that is a path that you choose to go through, it truly is just a key to open the door. Right. What you decide to do once you step in that door has nothing to do with the degree, has everything to do with you. Yeah, very much. I, there's, You're right. There's so many people that have a degree in one thing and are in a completely different field. Because yeah. it's just how life took them, or maybe there wasn't anything in that field open in their area. Because, you know, part of it with a degree, too, is you got to be in an area where that's in demand, mm-hmm. you know, or pays well. Or sometimes, you know, like this area, it doesn't pay great for graphic design and art jobs, but it may pay but be- You know, like there are, you know, some other jobs that pay better. And people I know with graphic design degrees don't work in graphic design because they found better pay elsewhere. It's just, yeah. you know. So what happened was I ended up, so I ended up accepting and I'm like, I'll be a judge for sure. Mm -hmm. So I went there and I went back to the university, haven't been back since 21 years. Right. I graduated, walked off campus, never looked back. Right. And I'm like, you know what? It was so crazy walking on campus. And uh, for those who don't know, I am a smoker. Not proud of it. I am a smoker, though. I'm walking on. I'm like, man, I need a cigarette. Uh, it's a smoke-free campus, isn't it? It is 100% That's what I thought, campus. yeah. <laughs> and those suckers don't have a, don't have a, like, a dark corner anywhere no. <laughs> for you to hide and have a cigarette. Which, in high, I mean, it is a good thing. I'm yes. not. Yeah. I'm complaining because I'm being selfish. Right. But in the scheme of things, I think it's fabulous that they don't have any right. dark, you know, like yeah. corner that's all nice and cloudy and, you know, whatever yeah. that you can sneak away to. I completely appreciate the fact that that doesn't there because that is super, 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 super more safe yeah. than the alternative. Just makes it suck for a smoker <laughs> that can't smoke. Yeah. Right. Especially one that's kind of nervous. Yeah. But whatever. It is what it is. Yep. And I did try, but I could not find a corner that like I would like hidden. Oh, you I didn't mean, there... you didn't pull the old move from like high school where you just stand across the street so you're not on the campus anymore? <laughs> well <laughs> that would have taken a lot of effort. Yeah. And when you're a smoker, you kind of like weigh the effort right. versus the need. Yeah. And sometimes one or the other wins out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not to say that I wouldn't smoke across the street, but, you know, yeah. I didn't need to that badly. So we walk in. I walk in the building. And I keep telling myself, I'm like, you cannot call them kids. You cannot call them kids. You cannot call them kids. <laughs> you youngsters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because a, that's super, 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 like, you know, looking down on yeah, them. Yeah, it's and totally, being, yeah. Yeah. It's being very condescending. Jerk. Yeah. Yeah, condescending, big jerk. Right. You know, I, I can't be this jerk. Yeah. I get that they're young, and God, they were young. Yeah. Um, Did you but... turn a chair around so that they would, you know, be disarmed and know that you were hip and cool like them? I did not because, <laughs> uh, frankly, the chairs are attached to the desk. Oh, now. okay, yeah, that's no good. <laughs> yeah, that's that'd be a tough sit. <laughs> I I did wear I did wear my faux leather jacket though, yeah, so that you know they would know that I was like the cool. Right, of course, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm a cool adult. Yeah, I'm a, you know, a straight person. Yeah, but or square as they used to call them. Right. Um, but back in 1960, so, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> older than I am. But um, so I walked in the room, and is this like auditorium slash classroom type of thing? Right. And on the way up, I ran into a couple of them dressed up, and I'm like, "Oh, are you with this fraternity?" And they're like, "Yes." And I'm like, "Oh, great. We're on road, you know." We're uh, um, on the second floor, and they're like, oh, okay, great, you know, so I'm trying to make, you know, chit-chat and stuff. I get in there, and awkward as hell, no idea what I'm doing. I'm like, all right, I have my work stuff, my work computer with me, because 
I knew that the scoring was electronic. I didn't think they'd have a computer for me, and I didn't want to do it on my phone. So I'm like, eh. So I brought my computer. Yeah. Stuck me in a corner. I'm watching them chit chat and everything, and I'm like, we all have to wear masks. And all of a sudden, my head, I get this sharp pain. Like, oh no. And they embrace the axe. For those of you folks that don't know what axe body spray is, I am so, so (laughs) glad for you. It is awful. Yeah. And young people love it. Do you know the lot. the real issue is like most younger people, and it doesn't matter what generation, right? When we mm-hmm. when we were that age, it was the same problem. It was just a different product. Oh, vanilla, vanilla yeah. fields. And it's the the problem is Being that soft. people don't seem to understand subtlety with fragrances on your body. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, a group of the guys came and sit near me, sat near me, and oh Lord, they bathed in the stuff. Yep. So strong. Yep. But hey, I knew I was gonna get myself into it. I'm like, I'm okay. It was gonna be good. Yep. And I sat there an hour and a half of PowerPoint presentations. Yeah. And quite frankly. I had forgotten how much excitement and how much energy is produced from 50 college students (laughs) sitting in a room together. Yeah, yeah. There's a real kinetic energy, I'm sure. I swear the room vibrated. Right. I vibrated with all of this like (laughs) crazy pent up energy. It was crazy. It was like one of the coolest experiences. Yeah. I had the best time. Good. And this one person, so as they're going through, and there's like six teams, you know, eight teams of six people. And as they're going through, and I'm listening and speak, and, you know, I'm writing my notes down and rating them and all this other stuff. And then all of a sudden, I hear this soft voice. And I stop. And I'm like, it's weird. And I look up, and there's this person. No idea, gender. It's not clear. Yeah. They're wearing a suit with a bow tie, mm-hmm. but they have curly, fluffy hair. Yeah. Mask on, no clue. Soft spoken, though. Mm-hmm. So I stopped. I, it's different. So I looked up, started listening. And what they said really resonated with me and made an impact. So after the fact, I went and I found them and I told them, like, hey, I just want to let you know that you really impressed me. They're like, really? I'm like, yeah, you caught my attention and you really impressed me. And if you're interested in, you know, talking some more, I'm up in the corner, you know, feel free to reach me out, reach out to me and I can get you a card for my work and we can talk more. I'm like, yeah, that'd be great. I'm great. So I went in my corner, and afterwards, a bunch of people came up, and a bunch of students were talking to me because part of the event was networking and right. getting to know people, and you know, that's a good skill anyway. Because you know, going forward, that you it's something you need to be able to do. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Exactly. These are all college students in the business fraternity, hundred percent expected. Yeah, and you know, so I did the glad hand. I did expect, you know, and I talked. In the the person um, came up to me after the fact, and I gave them my my personal email address, and I gave them a card for my work, and I said, you know, uh, feel free to reach out to me. With any questions, concerns, anything you have going on, I, I'd love to stay in touch with you and help you in any way possible. And I said, I can tell you're very soft spoken. And they laughed and, like, well, yeah, you can see that. I'm like, yeah, I can see that. Mm-hmm. I said, but that's not a bad thing. Right. And they stopped and they looked at me and I said, you have to understand. I said, there's a world of people with loud voices yep. that are going to say a lot of things. Yep. 
And sometimes the soft-spoken voices can speak the loudest if they choose their words correctly. Right. And there's an old management technique that's when people get louder with you to get quieter because it forces yep. them to shut up and listen. So, and that's at its core, that's exactly what can happen sometimes with somebody like that. That's, that's definitely good advice is to see it as a strength, not a weakness, but yep. you got to learn how to use it as a strength. You can't just, like you said, you can't just go out there and say whatever and be soft-spoken. You have to have a good message. It's more important maybe than if you're loud. If you're loud, yep. you can say whatever and someone will listen because you're loud. But if you're quiet, you got to make sure your message is on point. So that's that's great advice. It was just their eyes kind of lit up. They're like, really? And like, yeah. yeah. I said, you really spoke to me. I heard you. Mm -hmm. I heard your message. And it was loud and clear. Right. I said, just because you're soft smoke, it doesn't mean people aren't listening to you. You just means you have to choose your message better. Right. You just have to make sure you choose what you want to say. I said, but anytime you want to talk, you reach out to me and, you know, I'll be happy to, to talk with you. Mm -hmm. And they were incredibly excited. And, cool. and we had this wonderful moment. And, you know, I talked to a few different people and it sounds like I'll probably be doing more with them in the future. I hope cool. they hope so we can work something out, yeah. but, um, it was just really a cool experience and it's, it's tough because this time of year is kind of rough time of year for me. Um, cause I have a lot going on mm -hmm. and really struggling for balance between all of the wonderful things that I want to do. Yeah. And understanding that there's limits to what I can do. Right. You know, mentally. And it just, it, it sucks, but it is what it is. Mm -hmm. And I just have to kind of accept it. And, um, you know, last week out of, let's see, I had three out of the five work days. I had things going on. Yeah. And that. It's too much. Um, it just is. And yeah. it sucks. I don't want it to be too much. Right. But it's unfortunate. It's just, you just, like you said, you have to accept your limitations or find that balance. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it's, I don't know, maybe it's time to redefine your balance. You know, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know what it is for you. Of course, that's, you know, you have to determine that. But yeah. But I understand it does suck when when you hit those things. I I used to hate that when I was working and in school at the same time, you know, because my friends yeah. would want to do something and be like, well, OK, well, I can do that Friday. You know, and it's like I'd, I'd go to school, go to work, then go hang out with my friend. And it's like, man, I got all this homework to do and I have to work tomorrow. And it's like, you know, it's like I, I was so out of balance that it was just I was just miserable all the time because you know, I was always doing something. There was never a, all right, I'm just going to relax for a little bit. There was no time. Yeah. You know, my relaxed time was homework time, <laughs> you know, so it was right yeah. back to the grind, you know, so I, I get you. I mean, that was a long, long time ago, but I don't recommend that to anybody if it's something you can avoid. I mean, sometimes in life, you just, you can't help it. You, you know, that's just where you are, but mm -hmm. yeah, if you can set boundaries and kind of you know, reassess where you're at right now. And it's tough. And on the upside though, realistically, there is also the, you know, today's we're recording this on the 5th of December. You've got 20 days to get through basically, you know, mm -hmm. you have just under three weeks and then your balance should be easier to deal with because you don't have holiday stuff anymore. Unless you yeah. do a new year's thing, which I don't think you really did a big new year's thing. So no, not yeah. really. So, uh, you know, I, if I do anything, I, I go out, but, yeah. um, I probably won't this year. I don't think. Yeah. So, you know, that's, that's something to always try to keep in mind though, too, is, you know, like we talked on here plenty of times, right? Like whatever we're dealing with, it's not permanent. It's, you know, mm -hmm. there is a timeline on it. So, you know, maybe having that timeline in your head, you kind of see the finish line, you know, <laughs> Yeah. like might be tough that, for a couple of weeks, but I'll be okay. And, you know, yeah. And that's the thing. I mean, truly the, the rest, I have something every Saturday 
for yeah. the next four weeks. Right. Which, you know, that is is what it is. Um, you know, I'm working full time, but I do have every Monday off, which is nice. Mm-hmm. I am working from home on Fridays, which is nice. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's just... I understand that it's, it's again, kind of what we were talking about on originally, which is the the uncomfortable, but okay. Yeah. And that's really, I mean, that's kind of like the theme for the show. It's yeah. like everything is that we've been doing, both of us, has just really been, it's been uncomfortable. Yeah. It's moving it's not, the right way. But like I said, it's like you feel yeah. like you're rolling down a hill uncontrollably, but you know where you wanted to go is at the end of the hill. You may not know what the destination is down there, but you know you're heading the right way. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, it's uncomfortable, but okay. Yep. You know, I, one of my closest friends right now, um, we do not live close to each other by any stretch of imagination, but we would love to be able to meet up. And it's one of those things. It's, it's uncomfortable because we want to meet but okay because we understand that it has to happen in its right time yep you know everything in life right now is about uncomfortable but okay yeah. and i'm actually truly feeling okay with it yeah which is weird that i i totally get you out. yeah i totally get you because i normally this yeah. is you know uncertainty with me is not something i'm good with i yeah. i want to have it planned out to like the 19th degree so that i can anticipate every little move and be ready and and i can't and i'm just okay with it right now so you know Hopefully yeah. both of us will be able to use this going forward the next time we're in something like this so we can go, hey, we did this before. We were okay. So luckily mm-hmm. with both of us talking about it, we can hold each other to like, hey, remember when you this, you know, so. Yeah, exactly. We, like, it's okay. Yeah. It, it's truly okay. Yep. Yeah, that's the thing is like even it is in those scenarios. It's like even if things were to go as the worst they could go in these scenarios. Mm-hmm the worst is really not bad things. It's yeah, just exactly different. So, you know, and again, there's like, you know, my, um, uh, my social worker said to me, you know, like, what if everything goes great? <laughs> what if it all goes right? You know, and that's also a possibility. So let's also not lose sight of that, of course. But well, how scary is, is that? If everything goes right. I mean, <laughs> right. Yeah. Seriously. Oh, you talk about me being uncomfortable. Terrifying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, 100%. I'm like I've said on here before, it's that that married with children thing when Al Bundy has good luck and he's like, whenever I have good luck, an equal amount of bad luck accumulates. <laughs> it's simple bundy you know, and it's like, yep, that's how I've always been is if things are going too well, there's something waiting around the corner for me. And it's not true, but that's how right. my brain works. You know, it's. What it, what it is is it could be the tiniest pebble. I'm mm-hmm. I'm I'm riding great. I hit a tiny pebble and it really doesn't affect my ride, but it bumps a little bit. But in my mm-hmm. brain, I might as well have hit a boulder and gotten yeah. thrown off my bike because my brain catastrophizes the little and minimizes the the maximal or you know maximum mm-hmm. thing. So it's you know it's that's where another spot of balance that I need is to quit over like quit giving the little stuff so much power and, Mm -hmm. you know, and give the big, the, the little stuff, you know, the big stuff, more power in that, you know, or the positive stuff. I mean, you know, so that in the end, I'm just like, eh, it was just a pebble. I'm fine. You know, whatever. And just keep, keep going down the stream, you know, like a leaf in the the wind, as they say, you know, (laughs) (laughs) like the wind changes directions. Oh, well, I'm just going this way now, I guess, you know, (laughs) but it's so hard. Especially when you have 30, you know, 40 years of essentially thinking the other way and you're trying real hard. I'd say more 30 because I have been working at it the last, what, seven or so years. But, you know, it's a slow process. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. Yeah, we're mentally 30 anyways. Sure, why not? (laughs) (laughs) I really am, though, actually. It's like I don't feel 20. Like mentally, I feel older than twenty, but I don't feel forty. You know, so oh, that actually is pretty I'm, accurate. I'm in my thirties. I I yeah. know I'm in my thirties. Yeah. Granted, I'm forty three, but I know I'm in my thirties. Yeah. I figure that's how our brains are going to be set until we're fifty, sixty, and then I figure it'll shift up a little bit. You know, probably. Maybe that's what it does. Every decade, it shifts up a decade, but you're always a decade behind. 
you know, because when you're in your 20s, you know, you're like, oh, man, I'm 20. When you're 30, you're like, I still feel like I did it 21, you know, and at 40, it's like, I still feel like I did in my 30s. So until there's another breakdown in your body or something like that <laughs> like you I know where though <laughs> I, I swear on everything possible <laughs> hanging out with a group of 20 year olds oh, nothing makes you feel older quicker <laughs> I felt ancient yeah like oh my god the <laughs> like I mentioned a couple things to them like you were talking about the social aspect of the fraternity and I mentioned a few things and their eyes lit up they're like oh what was that like <laughs> like oh back in the god. dark ages <laughs> like before I'm cell like phones the from like the, the... The historian at the yeah. library or the like, museum. It's like, what yeah. the heck? We heard you guys used to have to go into caves and look in these encyclopedias. <laughs> 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 you didn't even have Google? <laughs> like, like oh, no, we just had Ask Jeeves back then. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, I miss Jeeves. He was a good guy. Oh, man. <laughs> Yeah. He solved a lot of my problems. It's so true, though. I, I was at Tony's one night, and his daughter was playing a video game. And, man, you talk about some, like, just asking questions. It makes yeah. you feel like you have no idea what a video game even is. And they're like, what are you, stupid? <laughs> you know? like, <laughs> And it's like, I've been playing video games longer than you've been alive. <laughs> I mean, they were so fascinated. They're like, oh, yeah. tell me. Or what was that oh, like? <laughs> I'm like, oh, good God. Yeah, you're like, gather around, children. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you stories. <laughs> Let me regale you with tales. <laughs> I actually, after the fact, because I did speak up one of my, um, well, the president pretty much of my fraternity at the time, back in 2000. And I told them, I'm like, honestly, Folks, you really need to know Josh because he is by far the best president that uh, this chapter has had um, up until 2000. I mean, I can't speak after right. that, of course, yeah, but uh, yeah, you know, it's up to that point. He did amazing things for the com- for the chapter and for uh, the fraternity, and highly recommend this guy. So afterwards, when I got home, I thought about I'm like, ooh, he's going to be getting LinkedIn messages. <laughs> so I shot him a message through Facebook Messenger, and I'm like, hey, just so you know, <laughs> you get like random messages from college students. It's because I've been dropping your name and saying how an amazing president you are and blah, 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 blah. And uh, he came back. He's like, oh, that's cool. I have been getting some random messages. So <laughs> this helps make some sense of things. I'm like, great. <laughs> right. That's funny. Yeah, I'm, at least you thought about it because it would have been, you know, if you hadn't. And he's just like, why am I getting all these messages? <laughs> It's like, why are these college students following me yeah. all of a sudden? Yeah. That's weird. Yep. Yep. It's like, yep. Doo, 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 doo. don't mind me. Yeah. He's talking. <laughs> but uh, no. So it was a really, really cool experience. And I'm actually like, really looking forward to the opportunity to kind of imparting some of my knowledge that I have gained over the years to some of the younger peoples in my life. So, um, yeah. So I'm I'm kind of excited. So we we will see. Um, on the flip side, I'm kind of waiting for them to hit me up for money. So I'm sure that's probably <laughs> going to come at some point too. <laughs> yeah, or they're going to be you know trying to hit you up for job recommendations and stuff. Right. Or both. Which I do not do. Yeah. I will. I will pass on resumes, make sure things get to the right people. Right. But I will not necessarily recommend until oh. I know you yeah, personally. Yeah, I was going to say, especially. Your work ethic. Yeah, I was going to say, especially not knowing somebody who's, yeah, like yeah. you said, like, hey, I can make sure it goes where it needs to go, and that's the best I can do for you. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. I will not give a written recommendation to anyone until I have experienced their work ethic. Yeah. <laughs> Good, 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 good call. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. So anyways, I mean, those are kind of the highlights of what I've been going through. Of the lights before Christmas, which is absolutely amazing and beautiful. 
I did get my Christmas tree up, which is absolutely amazing and beautiful. <laughs> and um, I've got my stockings hung, which it would be nine this year on my uh, fireplace. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. And yes, folks, my dogs do each get a stocking. I will not be judged by you. No. <laughs> uh, nice. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I think um, I think we'll just hold off on the the article thing until next time because we're definitely over an hour. Yeah, we're an hour and a half. So. <laughs> So what Brian's saying is, Jen, you talked way too much. No, because I did too. I <laughs> talked longer than I meant to. But uh, before we get into the end stuff, I wanted to uh, point out that the um, 211 number has gone into effect now in a lot of areas. As far as I know, I think it's across the country. Yeah, it says right there, across the country. Um, and they... It's a service that can help with a lot of things. Like at the bottom, it says, like, I need help paying my bills, finding food, um, health care, mental health, substance abuse, housing expenses, uh, help with, like, COVID-19 or disaster recovery, food programs and benefits. It looks like there's just all sorts of ways to get various help through this. So it's at 211.org. Or if you just call 211, much like if you were calling 911 or something like that, you know. Um, you can do that on their website. They also have like a local two one one uh link and stuff. So um I just wanted to bring that up because there's a lot of you know, it's another way people can try to find help, especially if you don't really know which way to point yourself, you know, to get help. It looks like that's what they're there for is to help point you toward the help that you might need. So it seems like a pretty strong program. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yep. All right, folks. Well, we covered a lot of random stuff this week, and that's a good thing. So if you'd like to share your thoughts, opinions, comments, critiques, any of the above, feel free to reach out to us at thecrazylifepodcast.weebly.com is our website. The Crazy Life Podcast at Outlook.com is our email address. And if you would like to reach out to me, feel free to reach me through the uh, Crazy Life Facebook page. Yeah, that would be the good way to reach me. <laughs> you can always send me a message through there. Just assign it to Jen and I will guarantee see it. So I'd love to hear from you. And um, Brian, how can I reach you? Uh, you can reach me on Twitter at... Uh, Stunami. You can find uh, you can find my other podcast at salty underscore language on Twitter or at saltylanguage dot com. That show's not safe for work. And it's just me and my best friend talking about uh, just whatever happened in our lives and pop culture stuff. And you know, like this last week, we talked about um, well, me falling. We talked about Tony got hacked. Um, we talked about uh, some TV shows. Um, pie caking, um, which was something I didn't know existed, and uh, <laughs> just different stuff like that. So if any of that it you know appeals to you, please check us out. The show's not safe for work, so please be careful of that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. You can contact this show on Twitter at the Crazy Life Podcast. Uh, or oh, I'm sorry, the Crazy Life Pod. Oh, I got that goofed up. I was looking at the wrong line. Um, you can find Heno on Twitter at Ida Heno. Um, you can find his other podcast, which is called Moving the Needle at MTN Pod, where they talk about lately they've been doing um, like comparing uh, one movie to another uh, and kind of picking their favorite of the two. So you can check them out there. I've been on well, one or two episodes of it. Uh, if you want I'm jealous. They don't <laughs> use me. Um, you can find our Facebook group at facebook.com slash group slash crazy life podcast. Uh, we're part of the Tangent Bound Network, which can be found at tangentboundnetwork.com. So please go check out the other shows there. And if you're looking to start a show, please contact them about starting a show. They're really good for or, uh, about helping people find find answers to, you know, and answering questions and whatnot for startups. Uh, so, yeah. And, of course, if you need help, please reach out. 
you know, like I said, there's all sorts of people out there willing to help you. You know, if you text home to 741741, you can talk with a crisis counselor, you know, call 211 to maybe find, you know, whatever help you're looking for if you're struggling in different ways. Um, and then please reach out, you know, to the people that you know and make sure that they're doing okay because some people, you know, especially with everything being centered on family and stuff this time of year, it can be really difficult for some people if they don't have that or if, you know, maybe they recently lost a parent or a loved one or whatever. Um, and, you know, every week I, I mention about being kind and putting out kindness. And, you know, this is the one thing I've been kind of saying on the uh, Salty Language also, which is that through the supply chain issues and all this kind of stuff, a lot of food banks have been hit really hard. And demand up to, at the food banks has been up significantly over the last couple of years. So if you're a person who can help, please donate to your local food banks or shelters, those kind of things, because they really could use the help. And, you know, you know that they're, you know, feeding people, clothing people, giving them a roof over their head for, you know, how much time they need, whatever. So please reach out to those places and help out if you can. And, uh, you know, no pressure if you can't. But if you're a person looking to, you know, donate some money or time or whatever, I'm sure they they'd be appreciative so there you go sounds good folks i live by the rule of three which is yeah some of their okay one time they can almost always say okay i'm good ask them a second time they may waver ask them a third time you'll get the truth <laughs> so don't be afraid don't be too pushy, but don't be afraid to keep asking and reaching out to your friends, your family, your loved ones, and those around you. Because especially this time of year, sometimes we all need a little extra help. So go out there, have the best week you possibly can, and don't forget, smile, smile at people. And maybe they'll smile back and wiggle your toes. Have a good week, folks. <laughs>